Okay, so I'd like to start the uh, the presentation today just to make sure uh, this presentation is on Hydrogen Lux 2013, the new release. We just released it last week, and it's specifically about the mobile EDD functionality that's been included in this release. My name is Monica Gertner, and I'm the product analyst. For right now, what I've done is I've muted all the lines just for the comfort of everyone who is attending. We do have a fair number of people attending. But during the, the presentation towards the end, I will open up the lines and allow you to ask any questions or make any comments regarding anything that, uh, that we presented. So let's move on. The, uh, the agenda, really, I would just like to go through the workflow of the mobile EDD as it stands within HGA, Hydrogeo Element. I'll talk a little bit about some of the benefits that we are finding our clients are um, uh, getting from using the mobile EDDs. And then, like I said, I will open it up for questions. So what is an EDD? It's a, an acronym that's used fairly often here in North America, but it might not be quite as uh, common in, in other parts of the world. It's an electronic data deliverable. Um, you can sort of think of it in the easiest terms as kind of a, imagine a spreadsheet with column headers that tell you how to format your data so that you have particular data in a particular format in a particular column. So originally, the EDDs were, were used mostly for uh, the lab analysis data. There was a large quantity of data, and, and having it properly formatted is important in order to uh, manage your data, get your data into a database, and, and make use of your data. But we find now EDDs are being used for just about any kind of data. So the workflow for using the mobile EDDs within HGA are, um, I have six steps here, but I am going to go through them in a little more uh, detail. Uh, you create your EDD, publish it, download it to your mobile device, use your device to collect the data, submit the collected data, and then uh, submit the data. So let's sort of look at it in a generic kind of workflow diagram. So within HGA, and of course HGA runs on the SQL database, you already have the ability to generate EDDs. These EDDs were um, originally um, providing support for the what we call the Quick Checker, which is an Excel plugin. So uh, for managing your data while you're on your desktop. But with this recent release, with the 2013 release, which was um, the, the latest version was just released last week, we now have a new functionality where you can publish your EDD to make it mobile ready. So when you publish it out to the web server, you then have the ability to connect to that EDD with your mobile device, whether it's your phone or your tablet. While you're doing that, you do need an internet connection. However, once you've connected the first time, your um, mobile device will actually download the EDD so that you have the forms that you need to enter that data directly on your phone. So from there, you can head into the field, do your field work where you may have no internet connection as everything is being saved locally onto your mobile device. When you take a break, go to lunch, or at the end of the day, when you come back to uh, somewhere where you have an internet connection, you then need to submit the data from your mobile device, which was stored locally, and submit it up back to the web server. And from there, HGA can download it and bring it into your database. So let's go through the steps in a little bit more detail. Within HGA, you would create your EDD for a mobile EDD the same way as you did previously for the Quick Checker, that Excel plugin that I mentioned. The only difference is, is that you have now this new option which allows you to publish it as a mobile EDD. <clears throat> so for those of you who are not familiar with creating an EDD, you would pick from the list of all the tables and fields that you're used to seeing within HGA on the left-hand side, and you would bring them over here onto your template. So this is going to say what fields the uh, field personnel who have the mobile EDDs should be collecting while they're out in the field. So as an example, from the lithology table, you want to, them to enter in the from, the to, and the soil type, say, if they're going to do a drilling session. <clears throat> so 
Also notice that this soil type has a condition where it's using the list. This is the list that's within HGA for the soil type. And this will end up bringing a pick list into the mobile EDD form so that you can actually restrict what people are able to enter into that field. This allows you to, um, to ensure better data quality because you have control of, of what can be entered into that field. This, however, is just an example of an EDD. And for this presentation, I'm going to show you this example that has four different tables, and each of these tables have different fields. But this is completely customizable because the HGA data structure is completely customizable. You can make whatever tables and fields you want that are specific for your project. So therefore, you can bring whatever customized tables and fields you want to collect over into your EDD template. So as I mentioned, the, the next step is instead of saving it just as your regular EDD, you're going to publish it as a mobile EDD. So you have two options here. You can publish it to our SWS web server, so we're hosting that, or you can publish it to your own, some other web server where you would need to provide more details for how to connect to that server. So when you're using our SWS web server, you simply need to provide what we are calling a web link folder. All of the mobile EDDs will be provided under this web root URL and you just provide the web link one. That's just your folder specific for your project and your template. And in fact, what the program is going to do is going to take the name of your project and the name of your template for the web folder. But you can change this if you like. We also have an option here for you to include a station group when you publish your mobile EDD. So if you are publishing an EDD for your field personnel who are going back to the same stations time and again to, to take measurements, to, to collect samples, that sort of thing. You can create the station group within HGA and then use that station group when you publish this mobile EDD. That way, the forms, when the field personnel are looking at them, will actually have the list of stations that they need to go to. Um, if you are going and actually creating new stations, you also have that option within the forms all the time. So it's up to you whether or not you want to provide a list of the stations that the users should be going to when they go in the field. You do that by selecting a, a station group. If not, you can, um, you can ignore the, the station group option. So when you publish your uh, mobile EDD, you'll get an information dialog that includes a link. This lets you, right from where you are using HGA on your, on your desktop or your laptop, go and check out, well, what does it look like? So I can open it up and I can ensure, yeah, those were the four tables that I wanted and those are all of the fields that I want the field personnel to, to use. In that dialog, you also have an option to email that link. So you can email that then directly to your field personnel to say, this is the EDD that you should be using when you go and do your, your field work. So we have right now a, a testing um, EDD out there. It's very similar to the one that I'm showing during this presentation. So in fact, if you wanted to, you can go to this link and you can take a look at it. You can play with it, you can test it, you can see how it feels, that sort of thing. The, um, the supported devices are currently Apple or Android devices, and we recommend the browser be either Safari or Chrome. Uh, that covers the large majority of people's mobile devices. We will be looking in the future to expanding um, to potentially other devices and, and other browsers. But for right now, like I was saying, Apple or Android devices, Safari or Chrome as your browser. So now let's talk about um, using your mobile device. Remember what I said, when you send the, the, this link to somebody that is supposed to use it for their field collection, they need to connect to that link once while they have an internet connection so that their device can download those forms that you just have generated, your mobile ADD. So once they've done that, then they no longer need the internet connection. They can go into the field and actually start collecting the data on that mobile device, OK? And when they're in the field, obviously, there's, there's going to be times when you're in the field with no internet connection. 
that's perfectly fine because when you're doing the collecting of the data, the entry on the form for your mobile EDD, you do not need a Wi-Fi. It's storing that data right directly on your device. So here is just an example of the EDD that I was showing you and what it would look like when you go to look at it on your, in your browser. So when you launch it for the first time, you come to the home page. The home page is going to show you that list of stations if I had published it with a set of stations that the field personnel should be visiting, you would find them here. You would find the list of stations that they need to go to. Otherwise, you can simply create new stations. So you have a new station button. When you create a new station, or if you were to select one of the stations that, uh, that was published with the mobile ADD, you would go to the primary table, which is the location table. Very similar to how in HGA, you always need to enter in the station before you can enter any information about the station. So here, for example, I created a new station, gave it a name with uh, just example station for, for this particular presentation. You can see this table. I also included X, Y, elevation, and topic casing as additional fields that should be collected while doing um, your field work. So now let's take a look at the next table, which is the lithology table. So when you go to the lithology table, you have a couple more options up at the top here. You have, obviously, the option to go back to the home page. Then you have an option to toggle to a table view. Right now, this would be considered the form view. So you would see the form for um, the fields in the lithology table that should be filled in. So that's from to and soil type. And remember when I was talking about creating that mobile EDD, I mentioned that the soil type field should use the list from HGA. And there you can see the list of all the soil types that the HGA project is um, considering the list of valid values for that particular field. So this is how you would restrict someone from typing any kind of soil type that they like in there, um, make it a pick list, and they can only choose from that pick list. So of course, you would be adding um, multiple records as you're in the field doing your uh, drilling and, and logging your lithology. So you also have an add a record option. That's just going to clear what you've entered for the first record. Um, and then you can enter in the next record. When you select the table view, you can see the records that you've entered. So here, for example, for the lithology data, for the example station, I entered in four records. So from 0 to 5 is clay, 5 to 10 is coarse sand, 10 to 15 is fine sand, 15 to 20 is limestone. So you can switch back and forth between this uh, form view and the table view with the, with the button, the table view button. And this is nice because if you want to go back, review what you logged, make any edits, or delete a record if it's completely wrong and you wanted to start over. So let's take a look at the other tables. So there's also, a, for example, a water level table um, wanting the, the screen ID that the water level is related to, the date and the depth to water level. Or we look at the field measurements uh, table where um, you need to log the date that you're taking the measurement. Uh, your temperature, your pH, your TDS, total organic carbon, et cetera. Remember what I was saying. This is just an example. Because the HGA database structure is flexible, you can use whatever tables in the field you find useful for your particular project. So after you've been out in the, the field for uh, however long um, and you're done collecting your data, you want to be able to get that data into HGA. So you need to submit the data. For this part, you do need to go find a Wi-Fi connection, OK? And one of the other things that you need to remember is only if you mark a station as collected will it be submitted. So when you're done doing all of your collections and you go back to the home page, here, for example, is the, the example station that I entered in, um, you'll see the option to mark it as collected. So when I have said, yes, I've finished all of my collections, and I hit the Submit button, that station will then be submitted up back to the web server. So when you, what you get is um, a, a little dialog where all you really need to do is enter in your, your file name. So whether it's the, the field person's name, um, however they want to uh, organize the files that they're submitting up. It will automatically add the date and time that the file is being submitted. So you don't need to worry about adding the date and the time. 
We also have an option here when you go to submit your data to clear the data after you finish sending it. So remember what I was saying, if you have published your mobile EDD with a station group that has, for example, 10 stations, and you have a field personnel go out and say in the morning they collected four stations worth of data at their lunch, maybe they go to some local cafe or wherever where they can find a Wi-Fi connection, they can submit the data for those four stations while they're there. Then when they go back to the field, they know that the, these are the last six stations that they have to go visit and collect. So now what about um, importing that data back in? Within HGA, you're going to find a new option under the, uh, under the mo um, modules import option. So there's an import mobile data option available to you. So you can see all the files that were submitted. So here, for example, is the, the link. And remember, you can publish multiple um, uh, mobile EDDs for your project. So you can there's a drop-down list here of all of the ones that you've published for this particular project. And when you hit the refresh, it will go and check the server, and it will pull off any files that have been submitted. So again, like I was saying, if your field personnel submitted after, um, after collecting the first four, the project manager back in the office can go and check this see that the file was submitted and already import in that data before the field personnel even get back into the office. Or if the field personnel are always also in charge of uh, importing the data into the HGA project, they can obviously do that when they return to the office. So it's a pretty quick and simple import. It does some checks on the data, and then it'll give you a preview. Here in this example, I'm adding this one new station, and I'm adding four records for the, for the lithology information. And then what you can do is, is look inside of HGA and see that that data was actually imported into the program. So here you can see for the, uh, the example station, the four records were imported in from, uh, from the mobile EDD. So that was the workflow. Uh, now I just wanted to go through some of the, uh, the benefits of why you would want to use mobile EDDs. Um, some of these I've gone through during the presentation, but just to, to hit them home. So you can improve your accuracy and your data quality. Instead of going into the field with a pen and paper where you're writing things down, um, this allows you to do it all electronically so you don't have to transcribe whatever you, um, whatever you put in the, the field notebook. This should hopefully maximize your efficiency and increase your productivity because instead of sort of doing things twice, writing it down and then typing it into uh, a spreadsheet, you can do this all in one step. And this also um, allows you to, to speed things up. You also have uh, the security of knowing that once your, your mobile EDD data has been submitted up to the web server, uh, it won't get lost. It's there waiting for you when you get back to the office. So if you drop your field notebook into the water or something, or it gets stolen or damaged, uh, you, you lose the data that you collected while you were out in the field. This way, all you need to do is uh, submit it up to the web server and you know that the data is, is being stored securely there. You can also increase the data consistency. As I was mentioning during the presentation, um, you can assign a pick list to the field when you create your EDD. When you specify that it should be using a list, it's going to use the list that you generated in HGA, and that way you can ensure that your field technicians are entering the data in a consistent way, the way that you want them to enter the data. And hopefully all of this will show in reduced labor costs because you're not uh, redoing your work by transcribing your handwritten field work, uh, field notes, um, and having somebody else then enter the data, all of that information is, is seamlessly imported into your database. So this presentation was specific on the new features of HGA 2013 that was released last week. That's the mobile EDDs. If you're new to HGA, you can contact our sales department at sws-sales at slb.com to arrange for a presentation that goes through all of HGA's features. But this presentation was just specific for the new mobile EDD. So now I'd like to open it up for questions. I'm going to just give me one second and I'll um, unmute all of the participants. 
And then if there's any questions, I'll be happy to, um, to take them now.